I just created this awesome AI tool powered by GPT-3 in a few hours using nothing but no code editors like Bubble. So I'm gonna be showing you step by step in this video. Let's get stuck into it. Today, I thought I'd hop on and show you guys how you can create your first AI tool hosted on a website for you to start selling and making businesses off. The catch with this is that I'm only gonna be using no code website and tool builders like Bubble. This means throughout this tutorial, I'm not gonna write a single line of code and I'm gonna go from an idea to a final product of having a website hosted that people can go on and interact with and use underlying large language models like ChatGPT, like GPT-3, on this website. I know that sounds like a lot, but I'm gonna be compressing this down so that you guys can understand it in the most simple way. And I'm gonna be giving you step-by-step -step guide, me on the keys, showing you how to do this. And we'll start with stage one, which is coming up with an idea for my site. In this video, I really wanted to show you guys how you can uh, use prompt engineering and use these large language models like GPT-3 and combine it with a little bit of user input. Like I've mentioned in my previous videos, my uh, entrepreneurship guide, which I'll put up here, I mentioned one of the business models is a prompt-based business. Today, we're gonna be building a prompt-based AI tool slash business. So what we're gonna be doing is uh, taking in a little bit of user input uh, from the uh, user on the website and then combining that with a prompt that I've written and then sending it off to the API, getting the response back and giving that response back to the user. So that was the kind of restriction I had on what this site and what this tool would do. I thought on this for a while and I'm a very big reader and fan of uh, Stoic philosophy. If you're familiar with Marcus Aurelius or Seneca or Epictetus, these are all Stoic philosophers who have uh, really well, uh, well known and, and published writing that is uh, really quotable. Stoic philosophy is a great uh, operating system I've heard people call it for entrepreneurs so I really enjoy the literature and I thought if I can make a tool that allows people to give what they're struggling with like I'm struggling with a breakup I'm struggling with my business not performing how I want to this tool is going to take that user input and then using uh, the power of the large language model give back a recommended stoic quote to sort of uh, galvanize them and give them strength through this tough time in their life and so I have my idea a stoic AI powered life coach. Now I have my idea. Now I need to start writing a prompt and using prompt engineering to interact with the large language models to start getting these kind of responses that I want. So we're gonna hop onto my laptop here and I'll show you how I'm doing it. Here we have on screen a website called promptable.ai that I'm using to help write my prompts. This is essentially the same as the OpenAI Playground, but it allows me to save things a lot more easily. And I feel like it's just a nicer interface for me to use. So I've been using this recently. Uh, I'll drop a link to it below if you wanna, wanna sign up and check it out. Okay, so on screen here, you have a little mock-up of what I want the main functionality of the site to be. So are you gonna go onto the site, scroll down and see this uh, prompt, which is, what are you struggling with? And then they're gonna be able to enter what they're struggling with, say it's a breakup, say it's a difficult uh, situation with their friends or family. They're gonna be able to enter that into the search box, or not search box, but text input, and then hit the get wisdom button, and then below it is gonna spit out the large language model generated stoicism quote to help them out. So now that you understand what I'm going for, we're gonna hop back over to uh, Promptable so that we can start crafting the prompt in order to get this working behind the scenes. Okay, so here I've written up a really bad basic prompt, but this gets you the, gets the idea. This is a zero shot prompt. If you don't know about prompt engineering and understand what zero shot means and few shot, which we're gonna go into later, be sure to head to my prompt engineering video, which is gonna be up here. That's an absolutely vital skill if you're gonna be making businesses and tools in the in the AI space. So if you don't understand what prompt engineering is, I'd definitely go check that video out and then come back and uh, follow along with the tutorial. So we have a zero shot prompt here. Give me a quote from one of the great stock philosophers, Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus that helps me with struggling with my business. So I'm struggling with my business and I want help from one of these stoic uh, philosophers. So if I run that, and then it gives me back a quote, which is pretty good. It's not the events of life that shape us, but our opinions to those events by Epictetus. So this one is a very basic prompt of, it's giving us what we want, but I think we can do a little bit better. So I've, I've written one up that we can look at over here, which is the final one that I'm gonna use. Now, the cool thing about Promptable is that you can uh, put an input variable in, or you can put variables into the prompt that you can sort of earmark for having user input in from your site or from your application. So. If you can see down the bottom here, I've got an input field and this input field is connected to the input thing on the right. So whatever I type in here is gonna essentially insert that when I submit it. Now, if we go over this entire prompt that I've written, I've done a little bit of role prompting. You are a Stoic life coach. You're an expert on teachings and literature of the Stoic greats like Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius and Seneca. You use the wisdom of these men to help the clients of your life coaching business who seek help from you in their day-to-day -day struggles. 
you only quote Stoic philosophers of Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius to your clients. And below, I've used what's called a few shot prompt to essentially teach this model what, what the expected kind of outputs are and what also what the expected inputs are going to be. So I've gone through a, a couple different uh, question and answer situations. So I've gone recently, I've been struggling with my business. It's not performing well as I've expected. And then I've given what I deem to be an appropriate quote from Seneca. And I've done this a couple times with a bit of variation who the author is. So by the end of it, we've covered a, a range of topics, being broke, break up, not getting what you want. And at the end of it, we can now take the user input in this input field and get the output. So now I've got an input here, which is my friend has wronged me and I'm having trouble forgiving him. So if we submit that. So the answer it gave us back is if you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid by Epictetus, which I think is a pretty appropriate answer to it, depending on how you interpret it. But now that we've finished with our prompting, we need to head over to Bubble, the no code platform that I'm going to be using for the video and start building the site. And so here we are in Bubble. Bubble is a no code, not only website builder, but they say you can build SaaS applications and all sorts of things. And essentially, it's a no code development platform. There's, there's plenty of depth to it. So if you want to get really funky with it and build something bigger than just a basic web application like I'm trying to do here, then you can definitely do that. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to go in here and create a new app. And I'm going to call this thing Stoic Mentor. One thing you need to understand when we're doing this is that what we are creating is essentially a web application. Now, you may be familiar with websites, but essentially everything that you do in, in modern web it's actually a web application so there is a front end and there is a back end and the reason we need to use something like bubble is because doing this uh, processing of the, uh, the api and taking a user input and sending it off is essentially a back end uh, function that we need to perform so something like bubble allows us to do a, a lot of work on this and, and manage a back end without having to set up a, a big full step application and, and host it so this allows us to do sort of more complex functionality without any other hassle that we normally have to go through now we just go through the basic setup process on bubble we want a hero shot at the top i think we can put one of these down here so this is all just drag and drop which is nice and easy to get started And so here I've mapped out the bones of our website, which is going to be a header, a hero shot, a little title and image here. And then this is going to be our tool here. I'm going to customize this, uh, this form here. And then I'm going to do a little bit of cool uh, stoicism kind of lore here. So there we have in a couple seconds, we've built out the bones of it. We can have a look at it on a preview, which is all looking pretty nice. So nothing too fancy here. We can get stuck into customizing this now. So what we're going to do here is customize this form to just take a single input and have the correct button on it. So I'm going to delete a bunch of this. So we're going to focus first on the back end and getting the functionality of the site sorted first, and then we can dress it up afterwards. So our main focus right now is getting our app connected to the open AI API. So we can start making calls to the uh, GPT-3 API. So we're going to start doing that by uh, firstly naming these fields. So we know what we're talking about. You can double click on them and then you change it up here. So this will be get was done button. So now that's all named, we can go to plugins and you have an API connector plugin. We need to add another API. And now we need to start uh, building out our API connection and call this open AI. So here you can see what we need to essentially wrap up and put into that API connector on bubble. We have a, uh, the URL that we're going to be calling to. It's going to be a, a post request the content type, which is application JSON, authorization, our API key, and the keyword bearer. And then we'll need to put our data in a JSON object like this. So we're going to hop over and start putting that all into the bubble API connector. I'm going to try to make this as easy as possible because this can be a little bit complicated for someone who hasn't done this before. So you're going to need to head to the add plugin section and search up API connector, install the API connector. So once you've got your API connector installed, then you can come over and uh, start building out the API call. We can call this a uh, a stoic request. So this is the name that we're going to be using when we're building out the actions in the back end. So we need to make this identifiable, change this to a post request because we're going to be posting some data. And now we've got to paste in this uh, URL here, which is found in the curl thing here. So this is the link you need to put in as the post request that we're calling to. We need to change this to action because it's going to be an action. And then we need to start creating our headers. Now the headers you can see here are tagged by H. So what we need to do is start copy and pasting these across headers key and then value application json i'm doing this piece by piece so you guys can see the process add another one we need to do our authorization and then type, be sure to type bearer in here you have to put bearer 
and then you need to go and get your API key from OpenAI so you can log in. In order to authorize the API call, you need to use one of your own API keys. Now these are free to use. You have a certain amount of free usage you have on your OpenAI account. So head over to platform.openai.com, create an account if you haven't already, and then you can head to the personal tab in the corner click view API keys and then create a new one. Be sure to copy that API key and then bring it back over to Bubble. Once you have your API key copied, you need to create a space after the word bearer. This is important. Bearer, space, and then paste your token in. And with that, our header is done. And now we need to add a body to our API request, which is gonna be found here. You can see this D tag uh, shows you what the, the data is supposed to be essentially. So we need a model, the prompt that we want to ask it, the max tokens and a bunch of other settings. Now, good thing is we can take what we have over in Promptable. I'm gonna copy it and take it over to Playground, just a new Playground. I'm gonna see which my settings were, it's 0.9280. So we're on text DaVinci 003, 0.9 temperature. Uh, that should be enough length. Let's put a little bit more just to be sure. And then what we can do is hit view code. And then this is going to give us a, all ready to go. We can just copy this from the bracket down to the other bracket and copy this over to our JSON body here. Now that we have everything ready and put into our uh, API call body, we need to do one more thing, which is to change that dynamic value. So we're able to access it when we're using our site and taking user input. And so head to the input area down the bottom and change this to an angle bracket open and close around the input. Now this is gonna be a dynamic value. As you see, it popped up down here. We're gonna say input and then a value we can put in a, a sample value and test this API call. Now, if we set this all up correctly, what we can do is input a value here like my dog died, which is gonna replace this input here. Initialize the call and and everything has worked as we expected. We've got a return values from our stoic request. If you click the show raw data here, you see how it's broken down. And these things above are going to essentially fetch the different things out of this uh, this response body. So we have a text field here, which is going to be the quote back, which is what we wanted text. And it's given us an Epictetus quote. So everything's working as expected. And now we have the response from our stoic request. Looks a bit complicated, but it really isn't that. So now that we have it all connected, we can head back over to our design and start connecting this up to our front end. Sorry to interrupt guys, but I just thought I'd let you guys know that I'm finally accepting consulting clients. So if you wanna have a chat with me and book in an hour call, then it's available in the description, talking about your business ideas, anything like this, I'll tell you how I would do it and the feasibility of it, etc. So head down below, uh, check out the consulting link in the description and in the pinned comment. And if you're enjoying the video, please leave me a like by now. Uh, it really, really helps my channel and I'd really appreciate it if you could drop me a like. So back to the video. What we also need in this page is a text element to show the response from the API once we've got it. So the people are gonna put in their struggle, hit the button, it's gonna go to the API, come back, and now we need to display that text in a, in a dynamic text uh, asset on the page. Okay, so we have this here, center align it. We need to set up the back end logic for what happens when this get wisdom button is clicked. So if you double click on get wisdom, you can go start and edit workflow. You come over here, add an action, and we have added our stoic request as an action. So we can start off here. So we need to set up what's called a state. And this state is something that can be toggled on and off. So you need to click on the uh, text box here, conditional, and this tab's up on the right. And we'll define a new condition. Click this text. And then down the bottom, create a new custom state. We're gonna call that uh, stoic response and a state type of text. And then we're gonna want it to be not empty. So when it's not empty, that's gonna be the state that we're looking for. Now that we've set up the state management, we can head back to our workflow for the button. So we can go get wisdom, start and edit workflow. So we've got the stoic request set up. Now we need to toggle the state change for the text response area that we've just set up. So the stoic request is triggered when the the button is clicked and then it needs to toggle the state to display the generated text. So we click on here, click to add an action, element actions, set state. Be sure to head back and change the name of the response bit of text where the quote will be displayed so it's memorable. I'm just gonna call it quote text and head back to your workflow. Set the element up here as quote text and then the custom response is going to be stoic response. So when we click on result of step one, it's gonna be referencing the, the big body of response we got back, that big chunk of JSON and all the different fields. So we're gonna start digging through that and trying to pluck out that text field that we want. So we can head here, choices, first item, T, 
text. So with this value result of step one's choices, first items text, this essentially digs through that response and plucks out the text that we want. As simple as I can put it, this workflow we've just created is when the button is clicked, it takes the input from that the user has provided, includes that in our API call, which we've called a stoic request, sends that off. When it comes back, it digs through and finds that text value that we want, which contains the quote. And then it's updating the state of that final quote area down the bottom to include and have the value of the quote that we just got back from the request. So what the dynamic value of this is going to be is the quote text, so the name of the field itself, this, this text, and it's going to be the stoic response. We have the dynamic value set up. Now we can preview the site and see if it's all working. Now I can put in here my dog guide, ask for wisdom. It's gonna send the API request and hopefully it's gonna show us a quote back. It is not the size of things which produce the greatest effect on the soul, but the size of the view we take on them. So we've got everything working in the back end. Maybe we can play around with the display of this a little bit, but essentially we have created a website that's gonna take in some user input, package it up with a prompt we've written, query the API, get the response back and display it for the user. So now I'm gonna go through and, and tidy this all up and make it look nice. And then we have a final product. So I'll be back in a second. And now we're back with the completed site. I'm gonna give you a quick look through on the editor and then I'm gonna show you the live product. So I've made a little logo up here for the Stoic Mentor. I put in some appropriate text, a Stoic Mentor for life's toughest battles. AI powered personalized wisdom you need from history's greatest minds. So I've got these buttons get wisdom, get wisdom, and they all link down to this section here. Put in a bit of a, a nice a nice Roman style image here. And I've put in a bit of context down the bottom as well regarding uh, who these quotes are gonna be from and the kind of lives they've lived. So this is the editor side, and then we have the finished product, thestoicmentor.com, and we have the finished product here. Now, I'm pretty happy with how this came out given it was only a few hours work, but we have these buttons here, get wisdom, that takes you down to this. Get wisdom takes you down to this, of course. And then we can prompt in here. I've hidden the text field so we can put. And there we have it, a response from Seneca. What holds sorrow isn't the passing of time, but us clinging to it. Very easy to do. And I hope the, the tutorial side of things of the, the nitty gritty of bubble, which can be a little bit confusing, uh, was enough for you. And I'm gonna put this in the description. If you have any questions, then please hit down below and I'll be sure to answer them as quick as I can. But I'm a beginner to bubble too. I haven't used this thing before, but I was able to pick it up with a little bit of tutorial help and uh, just trial and error. Guys, this is the kind of stuff that you need to be playing around with and getting familiar with if you wanna be building AI based businesses in the future. Like Paul Jacobian said in the interview I did with him, it's all about building fast and getting things out in like a week. And if you can't do it in a week, you do it in a few days. Like really push yourself to be playing around with these tools and getting stuck in and, and learning. Like I'm learning so much just by shooting these videos with you guys. So th there's like bubble editor. I was not familiar with that, but I've learned how to use it. So I really urge you guys to hop in, start playing around with these tools. So if you like this kind of AI entrepreneurship focused content, I make videos three times a week or more. Head down below and subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss the next one because I have some bangers coming up soon. I've got an entire whiteboard there with great ideas that I can't wait to share with you guys. Uh, so please hit down below, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I really, really appreciate it. And leave a comment if you have any questions, but that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.